What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. Before I get into this video, I want to remind you guys that if you are watching and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to Too Raw for TV. Um, if you haven't hit that notification bell, please hit that so you'll be notified of any video that I put out there. And also, if you like and or at least appreciate the content that's on this channel, please hit the like button. Um, shout out to Ticket TV for his video on this. He's the first one I saw to do a video on this news. Uh, Zion Williamson of New Orleans Pelicans will be out six to eight weeks after having surgery to repair a meniscus tear in his knee, the knee that he injured in that preseason game. Uh, I think it was against the San Antonio Spurs. And he will miss, like I said, the first two weeks of the season. So uh, this news was brought was was broken by Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN. Um, yeah, yeah, I think he injured it in a preseason game against the Spurs, and he was ruled out in that preseason finale against the New York Knicks. Uh, initially, it was just ruled, it was uh, uh, considered right knee soreness and that he would be out for weeks. Uh, but it was uh, later on confirmed that he suffered a meniscus tear. And he was on a tear, literally, during the preseason, averaging better than 23 points and six and a half rebounds on over 71% shooting in uh, the first four games. Um, so this is going to hurt Zion Williamson from both a personal perspective and it's going to hurt the Pelicans overall as a team. Of course, if you really want to be realistic about it, the Pelicans really didn't have that great a playoff hope anyway. Um, with the extraordinarily competitive Western Conference, uh, it's different from the Eastern Conference. Um, you, you really need to win a lot of games in the West to be in the playoffs. Last year, the eighth seed, which was the Clippers, they won 48 games. Remember early in the season, the Clippers actually had the best record in the Western Conference. Remember that? I think they were like 13 and six early on and, you know, but, uh, a lot of teams got up to a slow start. But ultimately, yeah, you got to win a lot of games. You know what I'm saying? Last year, you had to damn near win 50 games just to get into the playoffs. Now, I don't know how it's going to be this year, but I still would imagine that the the AC would probably have to win somewhere around 45 games just to have a yeah, – I would think the AC would probably have to be at least 45 wins. And that's pushing it with a healthy Zion Williamson for the entire season. Or missing very few games. Um, now that he's going to miss the first two months, and then even after that, he, he's not just going to come right back into the lineup. He's probably going to work his way back into the lineup. It's going to be a while until he really gets into form. Um, if it's six weeks, that means he'll, he'll come back what? <clears throat> toward the early part of December. If it's eight weeks, it's the middle part of December. So he may potentially not really get into form until maybe January. So you're talking about a while, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so for the Pelicans, this is a time for guys like Drew Holiday, uh, Brandon Ingram, and in my opinion, especially Lonzo Ball. I'm sorry. If I sound like I'm picking on him, I don't like guys who get hyped up and don't deliver to the hype. Look, you want to blame somebody? Blame the media. You know what I'm saying? They keep shoving these guys down our throat every fucking day about how great they are. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they're not delivering. And I'm tired of these people keep saying, look, uh, give him time. I heard Shaq and Reggie just the other day saying, yeah, when it comes to rookies, you get you get a freebie. The rookie year, that's the year that you're adjusting to the NBA. It is a huge, it is a huge adjustment. But after that, expectations rise. This is Lonzo Ball's third season. I don't want to hear that give him time bullshit 
no fucking more. If this guy stinks it up again this season, if he's only averaging eight points or nine points and six assists and shooting 31% from three and 37% from the floor, and it's the same bullshit and missing layups and there's no real solid signs of improvement, hey, don't get mad if his NBA career is pretty much over. If he becomes the Tim Tebow of the NFL, of the NBA, you know what I'm saying? He, he's not delivering. You know what I'm saying? He, he getting the media push, and he's still not making it. You know? So, there's that. But from an individual standpoint, um, this might hurt Zion Williams' chances for rookie of the year. He might have, he might miss way too many games. I mean, <laughs> I mean he'll have to like damn near be prime Charles Barkley for the rest of the way for him to to win rookie of the year for that many amount of games missed. He'll have to put up like twenty seven or thirteen <laughs> the rest of the damn way for him to get rookie of the year. But you know, if he if they don't make it to, make it to the playoffs, um. So yeah, it's it's very disappointing that they're not gonna most likely make the playoffs. But um, on the horizon for Pelicans fans, there's still a, 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 a great reason to be happy. You know what I'm saying? The Zion Williamson era. Hopefully, this is just an isolated injury. This is not something that's going to be a pattern, overall pattern for him. And I do want to uh, piggyback on something that Ticket TV said. And put my own little spin on it. I do think this isn't the right time to be playing that I told you show. I told you so shit. I don't like when people do that. Um, you know, you being right about an issue like this, it only comes across as callous and mean spirited. You know, um, Another thing, too, I'm very careful about, it's just me, man. I mean, you you can call me a black militant. I don't give a fuck. I'm just careful about overly criticizing black athletes. I I, I just, look, I try to be fair. And when I see something, I call it out. But I do notice that sometimes we have a tendency to pile on. And we do it to ourselves. But we give other people passes. We do it. We do it all the time. All right? And, and I don't like how the media sometimes will uh, will attach the word fat and lazy to one of us. But they don't do it to other people. Okay? They will attach it to an Eddie Curry. They will attach it to a Derek Coleman. Okay? You know what I'm saying? They will attach it to... Uh, May he rest in peace, Robert Tractor Trailer. You know, they they will do that to us. They will do that to an Oliver Miller. But they won't do it to a big country, Brian, Brian Reeves, who literally ate himself out the league. You know, you'd be like, oh, what happened to that guy? Oh, he could play even though he was large. He played despite his weight. These other guys, they don't play despite their weight. They're just fat and lazy. So I don't want to attach a negative to Zion Williamson because he's definitely not fat. He's just heavy. He's 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 carrying a lot of mass. Okay? He's not a heavy guy. I mean, uh, he's not a fat guy. He's carrying a lot of mass. It, it would help him maybe to lose, like I said, maybe 10 pounds right now. 10 pounds would probably do a, a lot of wonders for his joints. Okay? Don't listen to Shannon Sharp. And talk about, you know, him talking about he need to lose 30, 40 pounds. He don't need to lose that much goddamn weight. Losing that much weight can completely alter his power, alter his speed. It could just fuck shit up. You know what I'm saying? He, he might need to lose, like I said, 10 pounds. And as he gets older, okay, and, and as, he's, he get, as he gets older, maybe to his mid-20s, then maybe, you know, he could think about losing a little weight. You know what I'm saying? And I think, and I said this before, I think actually 
as he's as his body adjusts to the eighty two game schedule and ultimately the ninety and hundred game schedule and the at the postseason, I think ultimately his body he'll probably start losing weight naturally anyway. Because he's 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 only nineteen years old. Um he has what I would call baby fat, if anything. He has baby fat on him. Charles Barkley came into the NBA at three hundred pounds. And after four seasons or so, Charles Barkley was 250 pounds. So I think Zion will be fine. He's not an idiot, okay? He, he can figure things out. Okay, I'm tired of people acting like these athletes are stupid and that they can't, like, you know, they can't see shit. He has a pretty good team of people around him, I'm assuming. Um, he, he's, he's trying to build a career that's going to live, give him not only uh, financial security, but you know, to the point where he's the type of guy that can be an icon and he can build a, a lasting financial safety net not only for himself, but for his family and future generations. That's the type of player that he potentially can be. He can be a LeBron James. He can be a Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Those type of guys. Um, so we'll have to see. Um, he, he has a great game. All right. He, he's bringing a positive energy to the New Orleans Pelicans. And I'm not going to sit up here and keep shitting on this dude about his weight. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to keep doing that. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I'm not going to just criticize somebody for the sake of criticizing them. So with that said, that's it. I think that's it. Anything else I want to say? Uh, fuck Shannon Sharp for for being a hater. Okay, he, he's. I, I'm almost to the point where I wash my hands with Shannon Sharp. I used to like him a lot back when, when the Colin Kaepernick thing first burst open. I really liked him. He was refreshing, but I think I'm starting to have Shannon Sharp fatigue. Maybe um, it's. I don't like the fact that he seems to attack people who appear to be threatening LeBron James' legacy in his eyes. I don't like that. You know, Zion Williamson hasn't played one NBA game, official NBA game yet. You know, I don't really count preseason as official games. Okay, he hasn't played one game yet, and you keep shitting on the dude. Oh, all he does is dunks and make layups. He doesn't have a jump shot, you know, and all this type of shit. But then at the same time, two thirds of LeBron James' points in his career have come from within the free throw line, uh, free throw line in the paint. You know, and people have criticized LeBron for not having a consistent jump shot. Not criticizing LeBron, but those are the facts. And you can't sit up there and be a hypocrite. And like Ticket said in this video, you guys go after Kevin Durant. Keep telling him, hey, you know, you, you pressure the guy, lead a super team, you know, prove yourself, prove that you could be a great player by yourself. And now you're going to fucking sit there and say, oh, he ran from the, the Warriors because he didn't want no parts of LeBron. So that's some punk ass shit, man. And then even with LeBron, you sit up there and you, you cap for this dude going that's and see like a fucking idiot wearing a goat fucking um a goat mask. But then when the shit hits the fan with the China Hong Kong controversy. Look what you did. Showed your true colors. When the controversy hit with LeBron and, and the fatherhood thing. Oh, yeah, Skip. Yeah, I think you were a little too far. I mean, you were a little too far, Skip. Yeah, 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 Skip. You were a little too far. I was like, man, fuck this dude, man. When anything controversial happens, he coons. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. People, he can put up a good he can put up a good front all he want to through the coon, man. Well, you know. Maybe I shouldn't call him a coon, but he coons. I put it like that. He coons. You know, but anyway, that's all I got to say, man. Tell me what you got to 